the Most High. The Most High is God in the Christian terminology. It's the Most High in te- Christian terminology. Just different way of using. Now Buddha did not want the people of his time cling to the worn-out conception of the so-called imaginative relative God. Because it doesn't matter how much we imagine, God will be imperfect. <laughs> if we use our ordinary imagination to think about God, we might not make him perfect enough. So Buddha just want to break the people's prejudice in order to open up to a new way of thinking for them. Yeah. So Buddha did not want people to cling to that one hour and preconceived idea. There is only the most high Buddha, the Fatora, the Anuttara Samyak Sam Buddha, Anodala Tamil Tam Buddha. You wait all at the later. Huh? See? I think uh, we cannot and nobody can complete these uh, pursuits of the truth here. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some uh, custom at uh, Harvard to end the uh, event formally. And in the uh, supreme joy of enlightenment, I know there's no difference between questions and answers or silence and talking. Now, uh, I want to conclude today's occasion by uh, expressing my uh, great impression and excitement to discover this uh, living saint here at Harvard, which Logos is Veritas, truth, and at the uh, law school where we pursue laws to discover the supreme law here. And I am very grateful to have this occasion initiated by my good friend of mine, Professor and Dr. Great Scholar Tavan Tai, and his good wife, and good friends here. I'm very grateful to let us enjoy this great enlightenment and excitement to have these living things. I am ex- extremely impressed by your exciting capacity, blessed by your rich capacity to conduct the good, beautiful, perhaps the most beautiful English lecture I ever heard. And uh, so uh, I wish your capacity of this, your interlinguistic, multi-religious approaches, which can be only handled and conducted by the uh, Supreme Enlightenment, to bring forth light to the darkness of this era. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Very kind of you, thank you. Okay, I have three little questions. The first one is, uh, you said that we all can attain Buddhahood provided that one is willing to see and to learn, correct? And then you also say that we are all God can you explain the irony with these two concepts? Yes, we were originally, but we forgot, so we have to work again. Okay. We'll go back to our memory to find out who we are. So, during our lifetime, we are working towards remembering? Yes. Okay, so the second question is directed towards uh, the purpose of dying. Since the living is remembering who we are, what is the purpose of dying? Because the body is created only for a period of time to use in that period of time. And then when it's worn out, we have to use another, uh, more suitable for the new learning. Is there a dying in terms of body and also dying of a soul? No, soul no. never dies. The soul never dies. Yeah, okay. we just change the clothes, just like you wear today the clothes, yeah, uh, blue. But you wear it two days and it gets dirty. Now what do you do? <laughs> Get it washed? Or maybe it's too worn out, you throw away, you wear a new one. That's all. We just change the body, change the clothes. Do we have control in what we want? You talked about karma. Do we have control in what we want to be the next life 
or is this a retribution Understand. in terms of someone tells you who you're going to be? Nobody tells you who you're going to be. It's your own action and the fruits thereof tells you where you're going to be. If you want to control your next life incarnation, uh, you have to have wisdom <laughs> through the process of <laughs> finding back your own uh, path, yeah, and regain your own greatest wisdom and strength, and then you can control. Now we are very weak. Hmm? So we have consciousness and control even when we are dead? Yes, yes, but not controlling power if we are not enlightened. Hmm? We want to have control again, then we have to be great. Have you experienced death, or do you remember a death experience? Well, I can die every day. How, how do you mean? Well, I die and I come back. Can I do that? You can. I will teach you how. <laughs> okay. I think St. Paul or someone say, I die daily. It's when you are in Samadhi, you can severe the tie with this cleans- word. cleansing, dying. No, not that, not that only. Physically. Physically dying. <laughs> yeah. You severe the tie and the connection with the world, that's when you die. But when you come back, you reconnect again. Hmm? Why do you want to die so many times? I do not want to die, I just have to die in order to live. Okay. Yeah? <laughs> Yes, that's right. You severe the connection with the physical world for a while, or maybe half day, maybe many hours, and then come back and resume our work again, because we're not yet uh, in the time to die. We must go back and finish our job here. And when the time comes, we truly severe the connection and never come back, if we don't want to. If we want to, we can come back again, do good work for humanity. But we can control our destiny, understand? There's a difference. <laughs> and we know what we're doing then. I have a lot of problem with uh, being, interact with the world and everything. Yes. But the most difficult one I have experienced in life to forgive people. I mean, if somebody lied to me, I cannot believe anymore. Do you have any advice about this problem? It is not your fault, but then we must think sometimes in a positive way. Otherwise, people do err sometimes, people do make mistakes, and by forgiving them and trusting them again, you give them a chance to uh, renovate <laughs> yeah, their character and teach them a good lesson, that to be positive and to be truthful hmm? is better than just uh, accusing their past mistake, you will show them um, a good chance, a good, uh, a positive result from being truthful. Hmm? Give them a chance. 